Ya. Yeah, he's going to tell us about a string theory for 2D angles. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so much. Maybe let's wait for a few couple of minutes. Okay, Sorry. I think that would be better if we don't want to be too rude. Yeah, well, usually in the last <laughs> Okay Good that. idea. Yeah. Hopefully things becomes better. <laughs> Otherwise I have to repeat the same thing yeah. again. <laughs> It's a valid. Oh, okay, sure. Yes. So, should we start? I yeah, now we can start. Uh, we are very happy to have Suman Kundu today. He's going to tell us about a string theory for 2D angles. Please. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. Today I'll talk about uh, our ongoing work on string theory for 2D young bills. Uh, my collaborators are uh, Professor Ofar Aharani and Tal Sefer from Weizmann. <coughs> so the plan of the talk is uh, first I will review uh, the young mills theory on two-dimensional manifolds and its stringy interpretation. It's mainly due to Gross and Taylor uh, from 93 and 94 papers. Uh, then I'll show some example of string theories for 2D young mills with zero coupling, which was tried just after that, uh, uh, that uh, what are the possible string theories, uh, which can give you the 2D young mills. Uh, now I'll talk about a particular, uh, or one of those candidates, uh, which Hojaba proposed uh, uh, in the similar time. I'll, uh, I'll explain how, uh, we corrected a particular accent term, which was responsible for uh, reproduce, reproducing the 2D young mills terms. Uh, then I'll explain how we, uh, we made a polyakov version of this uh, Hojava's theory, uh, which was mainly proposed uh, in the, uh, <coughs> uh, the uh, Nambukuto type formalism. Uh, now, then I'll explain uh, various ex examples of wall set mappings on the uh, on the target space uh, and how in our uh, way of thinking about it how we calculate uh, uh, various quantities and uh, this polyakov version uh, give us a certain kind of regular uh, re regulator for the uh, singularities we see in Hojava's theory. Uh, later I'll briefly mention what happens for the world city with boundary. Uh, this actually relates to uh, the Wilson loop expectation values, which is also known exactly for the 2D young mills theory. So, so uh, and uh, the wall seat with boundary matches these Wilson loop answers. Uh, one of the non-trivial uh, aspect about this is it has a twist point, which I'll explain what a twist is. Uh, then I'll very briefly explain what we can, uh, uh, what can we, uh, uh, say about the finite coupling means finite tuft coupling and then i'll conclude and talk about some future directions okay so uh, so let's start with 2d young mills uh, it's a very old uh, topic from 70s or 80s uh, people are uh, calculating the partition function of this axon which is a trace f square integrated over a manifold m capital m underscore capital g let's say this is a, a target space uh, where the field theory lives, the uh, uh, gauge theory, and uh, mg is a manifold of genus g. <coughs> now, this is exactly solvable. People have so, uh, people uh, solved it uh, multiple times in different ways, and the answer is this. 
the, uh, I'll explain what this uh, each term is. The sum is over irreducible representations of the gauge group, what, uh, what is living in the space. Uh, for example, for SUN, it will be various young tabulos. Okay, sum over all the young tabulos. Uh, DR is the dimension of this uh, irreps, and uh, G young mills is uh, G young mills coupling. Area is the area of this manifold where the uh, where the uh, uh, where this uh, gauge theory lives. Uh, and C2 is the second Casimir of this uh, representation. So in SUN case, we know what that expression is. Uh, now you can note that this uh, expression only depends on capital G and A from the target space and nothing else. It doesn't depend on the shape, but it's not quite topological because it depends on the area. So it doesn't depend on the shape of the object, but it depends on the area. So it's not quite topological, but it's almost. It's called area, diff area preserving diffeomorphisms. Those are allowed, okay. So <clears throat> now for SUN, uh, we, uh, we take this uh, lambda parameter uh, as G young mill square times N, it's called tooth coupling, we all know. Uh, now we take the large N limit of that expression, the partition function, yes. DR, uh, DR, right? DR is the dimension of the irreps, it's, it's <clears throat> okay. So uh, we will take this uh, Z and uh, uh, do a large N expansion. Uh, it's, it's due to Gross and Taylor, it's very old paper. Uh, so what are the diagrams which, uh, which contributes in the leading order in N? And those, uh, those uh, uh, so this is the typical Young Tableau which contributes in the leading order in capital N where the Young Tableau, so, uh, how, uh, so there are two kinds of contribution. One is coming from a small number of boxes. You can call it excitations uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in this form. And uh, there are other contributions which are called anti-boxes. You can actually remove some of the boxes uh, from the below. And this big diagram contributes to the uh, leading order in one by n expansions. And, uh, and you can see that uh, if you fill up all the boxes, uh, that's a singlet in SUN. So it doesn't carry any uh, indices, and uh, and you can, uh, so the, this S and S bar are effectively decoupled in the large N limit. So that uh, and and both of them contributes, and one of one of the contribution uh, is called chiral, and another one is antichiral. But uh, there are some interactions also between them, and it shows up uh, very fast, like in one by N, uh, let's say in third order expansion. So uh, this is the, uh, the same expression, the dimension of the full diagram can be written like dimension of S bar times the dimension of S to the power two minus two G. It's the same factor. The C2, uh, the second Casimir can be written like sum of the S, uh, C2 of S, C2 of S bar, and there is an interaction term. This is very important to N N bar by a capital N. This is like uh, 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 this contribution interacts between this S and S bar. So, <laughs> For uh, simplicity, for g is equal to one case, uh, uh, you can see that two minus two g is zero, so it's just the exponential. And for C two, uh, the second Casimir, you know, we all know what are the uh, what are the expressions for uh, uh, C two for S U N, and uh, these are the three contributions where n tilde is the hook number actually so, of sorry, this uh, young tableau. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so you're given the representation. Yeah. And what is S and S bar? Yes. What do you know? So, R is S bar S. Yeah. Yes. So R is the full representation, yes. which I should sum over. <laughs> yes. Now I am saying that which diag which what kind of R huh. uh, contributes in the large N expansion, let's okay. say in leading some odd. Okay. Now, uh, now I can represent all those leading order diagrams like S bar combination of S bar and S, the definition of constructing R from S bar and S is like, let's take a very small young tableau of S, very small young tableau S bar, add it, add this S here, subtract, like remove these boxes from here, and this is a big R, that will contribute in the leading few orders, <clears throat> in the leading large N expansion. So this, this, so uh, yeah, so uh, if, if so you're trying to look yes, at, you're trying to maximize. Is, is yeah. that the point? So you're trying to ask where will this, is this like a derivative roughly of C2R or? No. 
no, it's no sorry i'm not a i'm not and i've not what does it mean to say you, you you have a representation what you're supposed to put there is c2 of r right yeah so this may be a very basic question but can you just yes yeah, so c2 of r is what goes there yeah then now 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 you have an s and s bar which have come but this seems to involve some base so, representation yeah so 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 to explain it uh, uh, exactly so this exponential of c2 of r is a highly exponentially decaying factor right so you want to uh, get as much of as low c2r you can uh, you can acquire like uh, uh, whatever diagram will give you less amount of c2r you want to capture those diagrams i am saying that let's say finite number of these diagrams or this plus this big diagram has similar order of magnitude c2 of r so all of them should contribute in the one by n expansion Yes. Yes. So either so you can take only S kind of diagrams that has some C two, but S and S bar. This big diagram also has a particular C two. Both of them contributes at the same order, and that's what I wrote. That C two of R can be written like C two of S plus C two of S bar plus an interaction term. Look that C two S C two S bar are contributing at the same order. n and n bar are number of boxes in these diagrams and n bar is the number of boxes here so that's the young table of yeah formula just comes from the formula for the quadratic casimir yes yes but you're saying if you take out ns bar and take out the new representation that you get has is related to the old one with this additional factor of s plus s bar perfect that, yes that's just a group theory result. that's just a group theory counting yeah okay. yeah Thank and you. the numbers are in the same order that's why in one by n expansion both of them contributes at the same order okay thank you okay Anti fundamentals, yeah. So one thing which is not clear to me from your diagram is you you drew n height, but without the s, it has width three. No, the main thing. This one? No. I asked about the width of three, but that will just it could be anything. Oh, I I just took it because it's it. If if you put it here, you can put another. Oh, you can put another box like this where you have n number of boxes. Okay, everything is filled without the dotted uh, dotted case, right? And that's a singlet that doesn't contribute. That's like equivalence class. You are saying that the width of the main part is set by s bar. Yes, yes, yes. You don't need more than that. It will have the same C two. Yeah, and it will not contribute. Like uh, you shouldn't overcount that. That's a singlet. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, and n tilde is a finite number. If you take finite n's, uh, okay, like small number of n's, uh, and this is the expression. Now you can expand that expression in. Uh, the, you keep the first term. So you have in this expression, you can see there is this finite number, and then one by n correction, and then one by n square. Okay. So <clears throat> keep. This is exact, yeah. Yeah, not certain set like all possible young tableaus you can think of. Uh, all distinct young tableaus will contribute, and uh, yeah, no, no, uh, exact. Okay, this uh, decomposition is manifested only at large n. Because let's say you hit n by two, like all the boxes are have n by two rows, then yeah, there will be trouble. I mean, uh, everything is in large n context. I mean, you have to consider small n and n bar are much less than capital N. Then only this decomposition is valid. Yeah. So uh, good. So uh, so I kept. Uh, let's say we keep the uh, exponential intact, and then you expand in one by n uh, to count the number of genus. And s and t is just the exponential. Uh, Uh, like you had exponential and then you had one by s factorial because of the exponential uh, of the first factor and the second factor. Uh, I will tell you what are the interpretations of this s and t. Uh, and again, these are n boxes and n bar anti boxes. And I said that uh, distinction between this n and n bar uh, manifest only at large n. That's what I said. Okay. So uh, so the same expression. So uh, this this same expression. Can be written like this. 
uh, particularly this part, n tilde and n tilde bar, which so, uh, looks a bit complicated, uh, which uh, Gross and Taylor identified that you can write it like a delta function oh, of... Sorry, you're too fast for me again. Oh. You had an exponential of something. Now yes. the exponential is gone and you've got a power series. Uh, so that... you see there is no capital N here. Huh. So that is intact. Huh. Then you have one by n expansions yes. of n tilde plus n tilde bar. Huh. And then n minus n bar. This has two powers, S and T, because of the two factors. So you've expanded the exponential itself in a power series. Yes. Or... And you have S here because you had one by n. You have two T because you had one by n square. I see. Okay. Yes, that's Thank all. You. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So uh, this factor can be written like a delta function of P1 to PS. And then uh, this, oh, okay. So for G, so I am working in G is equal to one. This, there is no DR. That's what I, uh, uh, here I told you that G is equal to one case, what I were doing here. So G is equal to one means it's a, it's a torus, okay. Now in the torus, we, we naturally have this A, B, A inverse, B inverse, which is like elements of the SN. And this is the, like, uh, these are the non-trivial cycles in the SUN, uh, sorry, uh, in the SN and, uh, P1 to PS are, uh, let's call it some branch points on that manifold, okay? 2D yeah, young mills on the torus, yes. Capital G is one, that means the target space is torus. So that's easier example to understand to begin with. Uh, and you can write that particular factor into this. So what this says that uh, you count the number of uh, trivial cycles, like what comes back to phi, and uh, you count those numbers and it will exactly match with the with this factor. I will not explain how I, uh, uh, how this is, uh, this is working, but uh, except this T factor, so you see that S factor is not there, uh, the number, and that number is uh, represented by this. So uh, this delta is actually, so let's say rho is an element of this SN, and then this delta will put one if rho is identity, that means it comes back to a, uh, a same position, and zero if it doesn't come back, okay? So <clears throat> now it's, it's easy to interpret this uh, particular object uh, uh, and we can put some names to these variables S and T and those names are uh, S we can think of as a number of branch points. Like we will say that we have S number of branch points and you have sum over S and, uh, and T are the tubes and the collapsed handles. I'll explain what these objects are uh, in the next slide. Uh, and uh, now, <clears throat> Yes, yes. A, B are arbitrary elements of SN cross SN bar. Yes. For P1 to, for P1 to PS. Yes. These are the branch points. One, two permutation only. So two, uh, two permutation, like not one, two, three kind of elements. Okay. It's like Z square kind of branch point, degree two. Okay. Yes. So you count. So let's say you have a torus and you have n number of wrappings and then n bar number of uh, orientation reversing wrapping and then you have s number of branch points and you count how many times what are the total non-trivial cycles you have uh, given this structure okay this p1 to ps is given h p1 gives you exactly which seat connects to what another seat uh, like uh, branch point and then you know exactly how to count and that count gross and teller identified to be this number okay and that's the interpretation of this, uh, of this uh, expression that you have S number of branch points and you have T number of uh, tubes and collapsed handles and uh, N and N bars are the number of orientation preserving and uh, reversing wall seats. So <coughs> N is the oriented, uh, N is the number of oriented surface and N bar is the number of uh, uh, orientation reverse surface. So that means that at a particular N and N bar, a full wall seat, is getting covered n times in a orientation reversing way and n bar times in a orientation preserving way. Okay, and all these points are like connecting between various wall sets which you had at a particular uh, target stress point. What is the difference between A, B and the rest of the P's? A, B's are the uh, torus cycles, uh, like non-trivial torus cycles. You have, you have torus has two, uh, permutations and uh, P1, P2 are the branch points, uh, which has one, two uh, permutation uh, elements. Permutation. 
They are not constrained, but uh, since it is torus, you have only one A, one B. If you have, uh, let's say, genus G, you have A1, B1, A2, inver A1 inverse, A2 inverse, and then up to G. Like uh, A and B are the non trivial cycles. Why are there permutations associated to the homology cycles of the surface? Like the branch points, I understand that there are sheets that are connecting at the branch point and you're doing something. But even if you don't have branch point, you will have two different cycles. So how to count that? That's you wraps around. Uh, yeah. So it's of another kind or it isn't. Okay, and you were saying something about degree two elements of the permutation group. Yeah, right? these are branch points at degree two branch points. So when I say degree two, it means it only connects two wall seat at a time. So P1 to PS have only one, is are like transpositions. Yeah, P1 is like you go from one seat, first seat to the second seat. If you go around that branch point. It's like a branch point, you go from one seat to the another, okay? To PS are not general elements of SN times SN bar. It's a general element, but it's like... No, but it has a specific cycle structure. Specific cycle structure, like only one, two, like two element cycle structure. Yeah. Not so one, two, three, one, two, three, four. It's not arbitrary. Not arbitrary, yeah, yeah. It's like only two element cycle structures. Okay. I think so, yes. Now I am... Uh, I, I, yes, I, I think so. Can I go back one slide? Yes. Yes. So you are just rewriting this? Right? Just rewriting this structure. Only the n plus n bar. Yeah, exactly. Just this part. I will explain what this part is uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. in some. So you are saying in this, in the, so where did this counting come from? So which are the different terms? So there are only many terms which are giving the same quantity. That's what the term. Yes, so, yes. So, can you explain this expression? What is it? Is it the sum over n and n bar that uh, no, n and n bar are fixed, let's say. Okay. Sum over one to yes. A S is also fixed. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now this is saying that you have S number of branch points, let's say. So at this stage, this is just a mathematical expression. That's a branch point, right? Okay, Th this is going in the opposite way, but uh, but uh, the, it uh, eventually you will see that. Uh, uh, so the way I'm saying it, uh, that story will lead to a particular kind of wall set. Okay, that wall set or Euler number will match with this this expression, and then you can. So you are now starting from a different object. No. A different expression which will eventually reduce. It. That's what you are saying. Okay. I think what Ashok is asking is, and what you are saying is that the same tilde plus n bar tilde to the power s. Is captured by that. Is captured by that particular delta. Uh, yes. Delta. Yes. Yeah, that's a combinatorial. Yeah, that's a mathematics. So you were asking maybe in that different terms in that you wanted to associate with different. Uh, yeah. Uh, what exactly is that? Because this is a well defined expression. I can put it on a computer and it Yes. 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 I don't need the second expression. Yes. So you have somehow tried to rewrite this in that. Huh, yes. To give some uh, a string yeah, theory right. interpretation. Yeah. Yes. But so where, where are the various counting stuff? I can see that if you, you have something to raise to SS bar, you get binomial expansion, you'll get some. No, no, power. n tilde is a bit complicated in terms of n and n. And this is like the hook number of that young tableau. That's a bit complicated than n's, just n's. So it's a, a bit different than just n. So it cannot be written like just so by n. Yes, it, it knows about the young tableau, what young tableau I am using. Just, N just counts the number of boxes, this knows about the structure of the box. So that's a bit complicated and I think that's... And where is the information that is in this? In this, uh, the, the information is here. I am using only one set of A, B, A, inverse, B, inverse, that's all. In the previous expression, uh, the information is there is only one term here and you don't have the DR also. The, the dr to the power, uh, this dimension term. I just 
because I didn't want it, this dimension, I set the G2. <coughs> okay, now I am bad in time. Yes. This formula is the dependence on the actual row of S and S bar. Because here you just wrote some sum over elements of Sn times Sn bar. Yes. But you just said the n tilde is a function of the whole Young tableau, S and S bar. Right? Yes. So where is that information? Huh. So, so this particular uh, combination will become identity in a very, uh, in a multiple different ways. Right? In a multiple different non-trivial ways, you can uh, see that this uh, particular uh, object is becoming an identity of SN, SN cross SN group. Now, whenever it becomes a uh, identity of that SN cross SN group, you put one. So you count how many ones you get. Then that one sum over ones will match with will match with this previous uh, big uh, big expression. This n tilde plus n tilde bar. That's so the claim. Right, n tilde it comes of this. Yes, you and just you just claim down. and then and then a computer you calculate it will be an integer and that integer will match with the delta function. How many time, how many ways you can get a trivial uh, uh, permutation out of that delta function? Yes. These are decoupled. I mean, yeah. In the previous slide, you have written yn, right? Yn. Ah, n tilde bar is for a yn bar. Only S and S bar, yes, yes. Ha, ah, that, that's, the, it's, it's in the large n expansion now. Yeah, I only took the terms which are in the same one by an order. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, but this n tilde is a function of individual n i's, right? Not just of total n. Yes. Okay, so the definition of n tilde that you're rewriting should somehow know about the various n i's, right? Correct. How does that formula know about the various n i's? The one you wrote on the next slide. On the next slide. Yes. Uh, How does oh, it? One second. Something is going on. <laughs> I, I can't tell you that immediately right now. I mean, I don't know how uh, exactly how to uh, see uh, delta function and uh, and it exactly how it knows about the row numbers and column numbers of that uh, young term. But what I can de what I definitely know is this numbers definitely match. But uh, eventually, well, I'm not asking how it works mathematically, like why exactly, yeah, but yeah, conceptually I, I the but, information. Uh, I, I didn't thought about it. I really don't know how to think about this delta function okay. giving rise to this entity. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Anyone is here? I think. Ah, sorry, sorry. You have summed over all possible young couples yeah. with fixed n and n bar. Right? Yes. Yeah, yes. That's why the NI information has gone away. Because you are already summed over all. I think that's, that's a good, yeah, I see. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, yes, sorry. Yes, I think that's true. Sorry. Yeah. Good. Yes, I agree. Okay. Yes, uh, I, I think that's true. Thanks. Uh, <coughs> okay. So, uh, the next term is uh, this n minus n bar uh, square by 2. This was interpreted simply by uh, various kinds of tube you can draw. Like let's say you have n number of sets uh, orientation preserving and orientation reversing, n bar number of different kind of set. And you can join uh, uh, two same kinds of set with a tube. Uh, this is called orientation preserving tube. You are connecting between two same kind of uh, surfaces. Uh, that will be captured by, uh, captured, like there will be NC2 number of independent uh, uh, such tubes and uh, 
The second, uh, second kind of tube is uh, within the same seat. That's like handle on a surface. Uh, okay. And uh, it will be, uh, there are only n number of possibilities. And you have such uh, this, uh, this contribution. And similarly for n bar, uh, n bar number of seats, uh, this, this, this is contributing for n bar. And this is for uh, this uh, n bar contribution. The most non-trivial part here to see is uh, you have an n n bar term which is connecting between uh, orientation uh, oriented surface and anti oriented surface now that's like uh, uh, that's like where you have some interaction between two different sectors the chiral sector and the uh, anti chiral sector and uh, you have n into n bar number of uh, choices for that because you have n number of oriented surface and n bar number of anti oriented surface and you have a minus sign for that Okay, that's that's also important. <coughs> yeah, I didn't saw it. I tried to find. I didn't saw it. But uh, but somehow this gives you the Euler number correct. This half is important. It's just naive way of writing this particular term and interpreting that. But uh, yeah. So uh, this is the full expansion of that full large and expansion of the full expression for any capital G. Uh, it's not for G is equal to one. And you see that now you have n plus n bar to the power two minus two G factors and everything else is more or less same except this particular term. Now here also you have almost same number of things except you now you have G capital G number of A and uh, G elements and B elements. Uh, and uh, you have extra factor like omega tilde. I didn't wrote down what is the expression for this omega tilde, but it's like, it's like some coefficients time, again, some group elements of the SN. Okay, whenever this particular object uh, goes identity, like the whole SN element becomes identity, you take out the coefficient of that particular uh, SN element and uh, uh, take uh, like sum them over. Okay, and, and uh, uh, the, uh, Gross and Teller explained that this is what uh, uh, what uh, what will represent what will give you the dimension of the dimension term also like the dimension of r to the power two minus two g. <coughs> now uh, finally, uh, these omega points are a bit complicated uh, to understand. Why? Because these are such points which doesn't contribute any lambda a to the power s plus t factor. Now, why this lambda a to the power s plus t factors comes in because of these branch points gets integrated over all the uh, over target space, the, their modular space, and uh, it gives you an area term uh, from uh, s number of branch points and t number of tubes. Those uh, tubes and branch points get integrated over the uh, all the uh, target space and it gives you this uh, area term. Uh, but these, uh, uh, these are also similar kind of orientation reversing tube, which doesn't get integrated and it doesn't have any area factor. That's the only difference between these two kinds of, uh, so uh, these two kinds of uh, tubes. <coughs> now the omega points uh, main contribution is this factor, uh, which can be written like, uh, this is just a binomial factor, but it can be written like uh, this, uh, Euler, num uh, Euler number of a manifold with S number of branch points, okay? <clears throat> so uh, how you, uh, so that, that's basically the formula. So, and K factorial is, K factorial is there uh, to take care of the identical nature of the branch points. So if you have uh, K number of, K number of omega points and uh, you have uh, identical omega points and they, uh, uh, indistinguishable and that's why you have this k factorial. <coughs> now Gross and Taylor uh, uh, claim that uh, this one by expansion can be represented by a string theory. Okay. Now uh, in this string theory, the position of the branch points, uh, s number of branch points, tubes, uh, t number of tubes uh, and handles are called the moduli. Okay. <coughs> and the moduli space will be the uh, 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 the number uh, the positions where these branch points or the tube position can be uh, for the, the the allowed positions of these branch points or the tubes and that's actually the total manifold okay for uh, the actually the target space manifold 
and we have to integrate over this each moduli and which will give a lambda a factor lambda will come with the coupling if you have and coefficient perfectly matches with the symmetry factor needed for each moduli which i tried to explain previously like everything is eventually a symmetry factor for each moduli is like 2g plus k minus 3 and that's like for k number of omega points then you have s factorial t factorial yes so you have s factorial t factorial and then you you have this interpretation also where how many number of points you are counting and you have to the power t that is also a uh, in some sense uh, is a is a symmetry factor right it's factorial t factorial is like identical nature of the branch point and the t, t number of branch points T is the tube, yes. But you also said hatches. Yes, tubes. So this tube takes, so you see this factor. This factor has handles also, right? Because I showed you the picture previously, and uh, this. So that factor is over. Position of the handle. Yeah, position of the handle. Yeah. Yeah, the tubes itself. It's a kind of a tube, right? It's a the the tube which connects between the same oh, same yeah. seats. Sorry, uh, yes, it's the, exactly the tubes. Like it's a kind of a tube which connects in the same 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 surface. No, 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 no. It's just handle means it's a same extra genus. Yeah. Okay. So and coefficient perfectly matches with the symmetry factor needed for this uh, moduli, and uh, string tension is identified this with this lambda by two factor, uh, which is uh, uh, the lambda is the tooth coupling we defined previously. The string coupling is one by n simply, and uh, then uh, in now we are interested in uh, the topological Young Mills where we set lambda is equal to zero. Okay. <clears throat> now in lambda is equal to zero ex, uh, limit. Uh, the same expression, uh, you don't have the exponential factor. You had a dimension and then you had an exponential of lambda a. That exponential is not there, but now you have the dimension and the expansion of that dimension. Okay. Hojawa and uh, Gross and Taylor identified this big number to be the module, uh, the Euler number of uh, the, the uh, wall sheet you can think of, which has S number of branch points, K number of omega points, and, uh, and uh, uh, T number of tubes, and uh, you calculate the Euler number, and that will match with this big number. So they had a pages after pages explanation why that matches. Uh, but, uh, but the main claim is that in lambda goes to zero limit, uh, this uh, partition function is nothing but the Euler number of the wall sheet you can uh, we just construct it. Of the modular space, sorry, yes. The, the all the modular space and then yeah, yeah. Not just the space, but the space. Of these of these positions, like and these are allowed, uh, yeah. Or, or, but they are not allowed to touch and all those kinds of uh, criteria are there. Yes. So little g and capital G are the same or what? No, 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 no. No, small g is the dimension of the let's say modular space, and capital G is the target space. Capital G is comp it's a fixed, let's say from beginning it is fixed and it is the target space. Everything depends on capital G. Uh, here you have capital G all over the place. Uh, that's like the target space. Okay, so that's where the gauge theory lives. So Z has some dependence on G string, which is a parameter. Yes, this is just one by N. Yes. So why does it have, why does the Euler character have that parameter in it? I mean, you're saying it's equal to the Euler character, right? Yes. The Euler no, character no, 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 is probably no, no. just oh, some I'm number. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, the, the, except this parameter. The rest of the coefficient of this 1 by n uh, uh, expansion, the coefficient is the Euler parameter. Yes. Coefficient of what? Yeah, is you've written z is sum. Yes. So what coefficient? Okay. And below you have z is equal to number. Z n n bar. Yes, z n n bar. And then you have sum over n n bar, and then G s. Okay, 
So this object Sorry, is minus I, one to the k twice g plus k. This thing is equal to chi. That's what you're saying? Yeah. So g is let's say g n n bar, and then g s to the power whatever power you have, and then sum over n comma n bar. This is a pure number, and that matches. No, 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 no. This would be included. This would be included in. I will match with those numbers later. Yeah, yeah. World sheet. No. 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 Target space. I started with the gauge theory oh. in in M capital G. Exactly. Wall sheet. Wall sheet genus is this power. I see. This power. Yes. Yes. This this power. This power. Yes. 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 Okay, so yes, whatever number of mod, uh, moduli you have, and these are allowed in particular. Yes, moduli space, and then wall set, and then target space. Yes, thanks. Yes, with n and n bar wrappings. Yeah. Correct. Because n and n bar are two different kinds of all sheets. It's like one is oriented, another is anti-oriented, and that's all information you need to specify the mapping. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Only certain small g's appear. Yes, there is no that there is a bound, but not certain small g. Yes, small g must be greater than equal to n plus. I think two minus two g or something. There is a bound and it matches with the well-known bound of. The power of g is just go back on. Power of g is that you have capital G c minus. Yes. So imagine that our capital G is ten. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then small g starts from ten, zero or ten. It will be multiple of two times ten minus two times ten. So only multiple of 18 genus will Yes, yes, yes. I yes, correct. Yes, it will be integer multiple of that. Uh, uh, but sensory norm normally gets contribution from all genus, right? So here you are. No, but but let's say you have a torus, and you want to wrap it with a with a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only that, only some multiple, yes, multiple of, of multiple of. Right. But that I think uh, uh, it's a statement about how many. So in this limit, only certain maps are allowed. Uh, I guess you will say yeah. uh, this uh, polymorphic maps. Uh, or yeah, correct. Of them. And then there is a relation between the two yeah. of the world sheet. You can have polymorphic maps only for certain. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, but twice little you know. g minus 2 it will be multiples of capital 2 g minus 2. That's what Ashok was saying. Capital yeah. 2 g minus no, no, 2 is. Saying, uh, you want to get rid of this 2 g minus 2 by redefining. Yes. Yes. I want. Besides, you want to interpret g. S was really 1 by n. Yes. Correct. Yes. You again have to sum over n and n bar with n plus n bar fixed. With n and n bar fixed, yes. No, n plus n bar. Because the power of GS has n plus n bar. So that is. M lower G. That is true. It will have various contributions with various number of n and n bars. Yes. With total n plus, with total n, plus n bar fixed. That will fix the total genus. Yeah. That means a, a, n plus n bar is the number of seats without forgetting about their orientation. So that's counting the number of area you get. And that is a particular one by n. <coughs> so the Previous attempts to uh, uh, solve this problem is 
following. So, the problem, the problem, the problem is to fi to write down a string accent, which will, give which will give these numbers correctly for correct genus surfaces with the correct positions. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, thanks. Uh, so let's say uh, the full young mills is pure uh, called pure, pure young mills in large gen you have uh, two sectors chiral and antichiral and then the interaction part I explained okay uh, now uh, you get only chiral or antichiral if you is square root gr right you just need the gauss pawn term can you yeah. go back yeah previously previous slide sorry huh you already know that z and n bar is so why isn't that the action what is the action e uh, to the minus one? r yeah. ah, ah, ah. Uh, this is the moduli space. It's not yet the wall shape action. This is the moduli space integral. This is like a simple integral over the moduli space. And it's the curvature, uh, the two form curvature in the moduli space. This is what you would get after. Yeah, this is the answer of the string theory you want to construct. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. They, this is in the moduli space. Yeah. This is the answer. Uh, good. So uh, now uh, here, so in how to get the chiral part, you just take n bar to be zero. Just write down for n only n. Then you get the chiral part. Antichiral is also similarly, and the interaction is n n bar terms, which comes from the orientation reversing tubes. I'll explain what that is. Uh, now, uh, uh, so this is the chiral part and the pure Young Mills. In lambda is equal to zero, uh, Coates, Moore, and Ramgulam tried this with only holomorphic maps since it is chiral part and that's why he tried to write a string action which is which only incorporates holomorphic maps and that matches properly with the lambda is equal to zero which is the topological theory uh, in the similar time Hojava also tried uh, so okay sorry in lambda uh, in chiral part again in lambda not equal to zero where it's finite tooth coupling they are also uh, uh, Vafa uh, has a paper on uh, 4D n is equal to 4 young mills, but I didn't quite understood how that is matching. But there, there is, I read it once, and uh, this is ma uh, they claim that it's lambda is equal to zero chiral part is matching. Uh, the Komatsu and uh, Pronobes is trying to do the similar uh, same problem in this uh, in this sector, uh, which is a Pitagama system with Polchinski Strominger term defined by Polchinski Strominger term, which is uh, capturing the non non zero lambda value. Uh, now, in the pure young mill side, Hojava only tried this, and uh, and what he did is instead of holomorphic maps, he tried to uh, uh, localize to an harmonic maps. Okay, now harmonic maps are a bit different. I'll explain exactly what equation you should solve. It's also well known in mathematics, uh, but uh, I'll explain what this uh, equation is. And also, this finite tooth coupling, pure young mills is not yet known clearly what will be the candidate. Okay, I'll briefly explain or uh, try to uh, uh, shed light on this uh, sector also. Okay, now I should start. Uh, Hojava's theory very briefly is, uh, is like harmonic topological sigma model. Uh, here it's a, a supersymmetric model. The target space is you have, this is the target space coordinate. Psi, psi bar are two uh, uh, fermionic coordinates and B mu is an auxiliary field. It doesn't have any dynamical part. Uh, and there is a BRST symmetry, uh, Q and Q, and also an anti BRST symmetry, and Q and Q bar are the charges, and this basically uh, transforms between them. And the action Hojava proposed looks like this. Now you have uh, square root H, H is the, uh, in, uh, the induced metric uh, on the target space, it's the small x, okay. Now you take a Q bar uh, uh, commutator and then Q anti commutator and it's a Q exact action, right? And uh, so, and also an S1 term, I'll explain what S1 is. And uh, this is also a Q exact term actually. And, but this is the term which is a Q exact and with a T coupling, this is responsible for, this is responsible for localizing to harmonic maps. That's the claim, okay? Now the equation of motion you get, sorry? So why should you 
the wall street theory itself is topological because it's lambda is equal to zero case that's what we are trying to understand where it doesn't even have the area dependence area is gone so the uh, it's 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 complicated because it will have fermions and uh, b fields also involved and it looks very complicated but the equation of motion is simpler which is like uh, d lambert sin of x mu is zero where there are two parts one is uh, covariantization with respect to the target space this mu nu indices of the target space coordinates and del square this del square is a wall street covariantization so you have both and this is equal to zero is the harmonic equation okay <clears throat> now classical uh, solution to these equations are known as harmonic harmonic maps and since this is a q exact action the localization should work with t goes to infinity limit okay we even don't need to uh, take the limit but it helps uh, one loop determinant around this classical solution uh, uh, cancels between the bosonic and the fermionic fields that's the most important part that uh, firstly it is q exact and that's why uh, localization works and that's why you all you need to care about is the classical solution and the one loop correction and one loop correction also cancels because uh, because you have three dynamical fields x mu psi mu and psi bar psi and psi bar gives you square root of the determinant and x mu has the total determinant which cancels with the opposite power okay in the one loop determinant <coughs> and that's why all you have to do is calculate the classical action for for a particular classical solution whatever this equation gives you so that's the uh, that's the string theory the main main non trivial part comes from this integral over the fermionic zero modes okay you will have fermionic zero modes and uh, this gives you uh, the euler numbers now there is a superspace uh, notation for this uh, you can combine all of them in a very compact form like capital x which is like x mu plus theta psi bar theta bar psi theta theta bar b mu now the, uh, all of them together is uh, called let's say x mu hab is also upgraded to capital hab del x del x b which is also uh, uh, we will call these big variables which are a function of theta and theta bar also as bigraded variables i might use this term multiple times that means it has four components with two fermions two bosons now this uh, this is the induced metric upgradation and this action which i wrote q comma q bar times d2 sigma root h becomes this so you can uh, you can easily convince yourself by choosing the fact that q and q bar are just del theta okay uh, let's say q and q bar are del theta which you can also identify from this uh, 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 this bearishty commutations uh, but uh, if if it is del theta and del theta bar it's equivalent to taking derivatives and uh, d2 theta is like d, d theta d theta bar that is like uh, equivalent of del theta del theta bar so uh, so you get the actually you get the same action from both sides uh, if you just uh, expand this in theta theta bar and then just take the uh, theta theta bar component okay and uh, now the h1 term which was uh, important like uh, previously we had this uh, uh, localizing action and then you have the s1 term the s1 term looks like del theta x mu some tensor pi mu nu and del theta bar x nu okay these are the fermionic objects <coughs> now hojava said uh, claimed that this pi mu nu what he chosen is the projector orthogonal to the wall sheet okay so you have a so he was also talking about some higher dimensional models like the same thing in higher dimension so there you can talk about the projector orthogonal to the wall sheet but it is actually identically zero in 2d space so since your target space is 2d you you don't have any contribution from the projector orthogonal to the wall sheet and that's why this pi mini is identically zero and uh, we we have used a different action which we uh, which will give you a finite answer now since the projector is zero and it only contributes in the places where you have uh, non trivial structure in the wall sheet which means it let's say you have a fold in the wall sheet what a fold means you have a wall sheet and then it goes back uh, and it creates a sharp fold in the 2d 2d uh, target space and then uh, uh, you will have a singular action a non vanishing uh, and it is only non vanishing on the folds so it is very hard to do an one loop correction to the uh, uh, one loop correction to this localization and that's why we uh, wrote down a polyakov version uh, which is much better in handling this singularities <coughs> now uh, the polyakov version is like this 
the same action can be written like square root h of h a b del x del x del x nu and g minu g minu is the you can hope to compute uh, uh, you can hope to compute uh, the tooth equation that will be the let's say a major goal uh, to get tooth equation out of this uh, string theory uh, meson spectrum yes it is pure young males, but that's why I said finite area is important, finite tooth coupling, which is which I'll explain very briefly in the end. What so what you can do? Dynamical boundaries. These boundaries. Exactly. So so I'll, I'll I think I should go very fast now. Uh, so I I I'll come to that. I'll come to that uh, immediately. Uh, this is the uh, this is the Polyakov version of the of this where H A B is a uh, uh, auxiliary metric. Now it's not the induced metric, and you can fix the gauge to delta A B, and the action becomes much simpler. Okay, now the equation of motion for this action is like this. Let's say it has a classical solution with certain number of parameters. Yeah, to delta A B. And you see, this is a bi bigraded gauge fixing, like capital H A B has four components. So that means the first component set to delta A B, the rest of them to zero. So that's why the ghost fields are also bigraded. So you need four ghost field to counter those gauge fixing. So that's, uh, that's the main, uh, that's the formalism. Now equation of motion is like this. Uh, let's say it has some classical solution AI. And uh, the various sort of constant will be the equation of motion of the auxiliary field H A B, capital H A B. So usually it should it should satisfy this equation, T, uh, this uh, T and T bar. Uh, and the claim is the the main claim of, of this formalism is if you have a solution with certain moduli A I. Okay, the A I's are the bigraded moduli which are some constant. Uh, it's kind of integration constant you can call. Uh, these are uh, moduli which will, which are solution of the equation of motion, but they will not satisfy the various order constant. So you have to integrate over those moduli, and then on the saddle point of those moduli integrals, uh, the solution will eventually satisfy the various order constant. So finally, thus the saddle point of AIs are definitely will definitely satisfy equation of motion and various order constant both of them but generic AI will not satisfy the various order constant but will satisfy the equation of motion okay will uh, will localize to the various order constant satisfying so I will explain uh, why that happens. It's it's through Morse function integrals. I'll, I'll exactly explain what. <clears throat> I'll explain one example where you can see this. Okay, that will be useful. Uh, okay, so uh, this is the this is the part where you. So let's say you did the first uh, integration over the path integral. Okay, uh, and then you got the classical solution, and now it's like a integral over this AI, these bigraded variables, right? Now, bigraded variables with a scalar function uh, gives you uh, so so the, so s will have a parameter t, which you take into infinity, right? So that's why this AI saddle point will is valid to take. Now, uh, in those so those solutions which will satisfy this delay s is zero will contribute to the uh, to this integral, okay? And AIs are representing the failure to fully gauge fix the metric. We couldn't fix it. And actually, the, the answer doesn't depend on any moduli. So it's so better not have these uh, parameters. OK. Now, these are the number of, uh, like, how many AIs will be there for various capital Gs. This, this, is, this is a big typo. But uh, for sphere, it is 0. For 1, it is 1. Uh, so, uh, so the first uh, first answer uh, what we what we found is uh, the accent for the for the corrected accent 
that instead of pi mu nu, what we took is uh, the next natural tensor, which is the extrinsic curvature. Okay, so you take the extrinsic curvature in, and it captures all the infinities properly and it, it has a delta function contribution around any moduli you calculate. And that delta function, yes. We regulate it using, uh, using a third dimension on the target stress. Uh, extrinsic curvature on the target stress, yes, 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 yes. There, there is a natural extrinsic curvature which is k, a, b and then i. I is the orthogonal direction to the wall shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm saying there is a natural expression for uh, uh, this particular object. We, uh, let's say I didn't do the regularization, yet I have a natural expression for the KB, uh, K mu nu with, uh, with, a, with an index upper. Uh, I think Loga is just saying you are embedding a 2D surface into a 2D surface. So there is nothing orthogonal, right? Like what does it mean to take the derivative of the normal? Correct. That is true. And uh, you, you can definitely do it through an, another dimension, adding another dimension. One, one extra dimension is a general GNRG surface may not be embeddable in only one extra dimension, right? Yes, that is true. Uh, but for working principle, you can inflate it a bit and then you can put a cutoff that it is not inflating so that it is filling up the whole space, the whole genus. So it is not going very, eventually you want to take that parameter to zero. So, so you take that parameter to zero and you eventually you have the extrinsic curvature. Yeah. Exactly. They, these are the these are the number of zero modes of C you eventually get, and that's exactly the same number it matches with. That's what we couldn't fix, and that's what gets manifested through this. I, I'll explain one example where you see a one AI and uh, yeah, harmonic maps. Yeah, yeah. Through Polyakov version. Yes. Surface and solve for the harmonic map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fixed, fixed, fixed Riemann surface in the sense that target space is fixed. Yeah, target space is fixed, but uh, that is fine. Uh, but from the point of view of the world sheet, is where you are uh, right, uh, Correct. Uh, uh, writing the Correct. harmonic yes. equation, right? Yes. Harmonic yes. Equation. So, uh, are you saying that for a fixed world sheet model, you will get? Uh, unique solution and then you integrate over all the world sheet model I or what uh, exactly are you saying uh, is e e e you will whatever arbitrariness will be there in the solution will show up in the form of moduli now you can fix some of them through diffeomorphism some of them you might not and then you integrate over those moduli which are not fixed by the diffeomorphism and you will see that they also localize because it had to, because it's a uh, super, like the four variable integral and it eventually localizes. And uh, yeah. Like you can have arbitrarily more moduli if you want, but after reducing uh, by diffeomorphisms available, you can show that it's only uh, this number of moduli, uh, which will definitely be there. For example, for torus wall seat you will have the tau parameter as your moduli. So you have to integrate over that. So that's that kind of moduli will so be there. So for a fixed tau, you're saying that there will be a unique There will be a unique solution. But that arbitrary solution will not satisfy the Virasoro constant also. 
So fix, uh, solving both of them is important. So that will, right. yeah. So uh, k mu nu contributes uh, like a delta function. Uh, now roughly, I, I think I should uh, uh, exclude this, but I roughly want to explain that S1 had this delta theta of classical solution. You just calculate this whole expression for classical solution. And uh, del theta of x, you can think of it like del theta of ai and del i of x. And uh, similarly, del theta bar of aj and del j of x. And you take all of them together and you do the wall state integral. You are left over with a metric ij, which is in the, so now ai's are the moduli's. Now ai is taking a moduli space, uh, moduli space, uh, like the uh, manifold of the moduli space, okay? Now this AI is at the, uh, coming from the manifold of the moduli space, and uh, now if you do this d2 theta integral, uh, you will see that uh, this is one term, and uh, there will be a Riemann times four Fermi term, okay? <coughs> you, can, you can easily convince yourself, like del theta of AI is like, del theta of AI, uh, AI is like there are four components, del theta will capture this term and this term, here there will be a leftover theta bar uh, in del theta and there will be a leftover theta from here and it will give you this a bar a bar term with mij just and uh, the rest are coming from this uh, alphas okay now you look at this integral without the determinant uh, sign uh, you expand it four integrals exponential of this times half rij and then fermions you see there are only four n, let's say there are four n number of alphas okay then you will have only 2n number of Riemanns coming down because that is the only non-trivial part. And this whole expression, you, you just do all the alpha, alpha bar, a bar integrals, you will get this integral where it is just an integral over small a's which are the real moduli integrated over the moduli space and then it is giving you the Euler number. Okay. Now this is matching with the topological answer. I'll I'll uh, briefly tell you one two examples, uh, one or two examples. Uh, first example is sphere covering a sphere once. So you have target space sphere and you have a wall sit sphere and let's say the wall sit is covering the target space once. This is the most simplest uh, simple case. Uh, take the coordinates as g, z bar. This is the equation of motion. The generic solution looks like this. The generic solution of this equation looks like a z plus b plus c c z plus d. This is a generic solution. Uh, now you can fix the SL2C of the sphere, sphere wall set, diffeomorphism. Now the solution becomes capital Z, small g, you can choose that solution, okay. Then since this particular solution doesn't have any moduli, that's why it better satisfy the uh, stress tensor, like the Virasoro construct. So and this does satisfy the Virasoro construct. Now you can calculate the S0 there are d2 theta and d2z, this is a sphere integral, it gives you a 4 pi because it just evaluates the area of the sphere. But under d2 theta integral, it gives you 0. So that means the z0 is like 1 because it's like exponential of e to the power t times 0. That's 1, okay. Exactly, now it's a holomorphic map because you don't have any orientation reversing tube. So only when you have orientation reversing tube, that's when the harmonic maps will swap. Holomorphic maps are subset of the harmonic maps. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but uh, you don't have more than one. So this is for the sphere covering sphere. That is only particular term. Particular term, only once. Yes. Let's say n comma n bar disconnected spheres covering sphere. Disconnected spheres also doesn't have any moduli. Disconnectedly, like there is no moduli. So no, no connection between two, two wall sets. Again, because of this S2 mod Zn, like you don't know, like there is no distinction between uh, n number of surfaces, you have to divide by n factorials. And n bar factorials because of the n bar number of moduli. So again, you get the number correct uh, without any moduli, okay? No, it will not get turned on. Extrinsic curvature only shows up since this is a re normal surface. Extrinsic curvature is zero for this case. Yeah. It will not contribute. Yeah. And, 
and particularly there is no moduli. So without moduli, S1 doesn't, uh, doesn't turn, turn up, okay. The next trivial example is torus covering torus, let's say n times, okay. Now there you will find the solution to be a linear combination of G, linear term of G times Z bar also, like there is a complex conjugate. So the, now this is not a holomorphic function. In general, this is not a holomorphic function. And using the SL2G symmetry, capital Z, SL2G symmetry, uh, so for this solution, you can calculate what is the S0. And you can see that S0 is not zero. It's some, some arbitrary function of tau. Now tau is the parameter of the wall seat. Target space is taken to be simple square, okay? So target wall seat has a parameter tau, and this controls this, uh, this S0. Now that's in the previous, previously I told you that you have to integrate over the tau. You try to integrate over the tau, you get a saddle point. Now the saddle point is somewhere, let's say tau is, tau naught is the saddle point. You can actually show the complex conjugate term drops, drops out. Like this term is zero on this saddle point. So this becomes holomorphic on the saddle point, okay? And finally it satisfies the stress tensor, like the Virasoro constant also. So only on the saddle point that is tau naught, xi is holomorphic and you have this, uh, this condition. And finally, you can count how many ni's and independent ni's and n and, and, and w's are allowed. It's the, the winding and the, and the modes. And you can count uh, these counts matches in the both sides. You calculate from here or in the gross and Teller expansion. Those number matches, but you have to uh, gauge fix some residual SL2Z, but it matches. But the crucial point is that for arbitrary tau, it doesn't satisfy the equation, uh, the Virasoro constant gets satisfied later uh, on the saddle point. Uh, sorry? Ah, uh, okay. So uh, here I said it's just a, a n number of coverings. I mean, uh, uh, since it is, I was concentrating on, I mean, there will be another saddle point where this term gets zero. So then you, it, that will contribute the anti-holomorphic, the, the anti-holomorphic ones. You, you, you shouldn't add them up. I think that will be a different lattice uh, counting, like ni and wis will be totally different. No, I think, I think you shouldn't add them. Asking maybe you should add the action. Uh, I mean, no, but he is asking if saddle. there are two saddle points. Uh, I, mean, I, 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 I will tell you this later. I, I, don't rem I don't immediately remember whether if that has two saddle points or. Yeah. Everywhere else, it is linear combination of both of them. Yes. You, you are you are definitely correct, but I think it will be out of the fundamental domain if I can remember properly. Like tau has a fundamental domain, and it will. Most probably it will be out of that domain. Yeah. So you better be within the fundamental domain. Otherwise, you'll be overcounting. So either you take that one or this one. So I guess, yeah. So, okay. Now, uh, this is the torus. Now comes the most interesting part where the target space is sphere, uh, that is G, capital G is two. And now we take uh, N and N bar to be one. Uh, and in that case, uh, uh, just for lambda is equal to zero case, dimension of the adjoint where you have a single box above and one box removed from the down. That's like two adjoints. So adjoint square, this is the dimension of the adjoint square. And that's like n square minus one whole square. That's n to the power four minus two n square plus one. So n to the power four is actually coming from uh, a, a, using the interpretation Gross and Taylor gave us. Uh, the, uh, this n to the power four comes from the disconnected two sphere. Okay, disconnected to sphere covering a single sphere. Now, minus two n square comes from single sphere covering a single sphere with one omega point. I'll explain how this omega points or the orientation reversing tube 
uh, it's synonyms almost, uh, comes in and you get minus 1 which was there times Euler number of the, of the sphere, that is the modular space. Okay, now here is no modular space, I'll explain how to introduce one. Uh, and uh, torus covering sphere with two omega points is like uh, torus uh, chi of S2 times chi of disk. Chi of disk is one, S2 is two, two two cancels and then you get one. Okay, this is how these are interpreted. These are like gauge theory counting. Okay, and now I will show you what happens in the, uh, so I explained to you what happens in this disconnected two sphere. Uh, now, single sphere covering a single sphere with one orientation reversing cube. How to think of this is like you have a sphere target space. Now you take another sphere and you press it like make it disc, two disc connected on the edges. Then you put it back on the sphere again, the target space. And that creates a hole in the, uh, in the, in the wall state mapping. That's exactly represented here. This is like a, this is going from here and then again coming back from here, okay? This is like a uh, bowl kind of thing, okay? And there is a disk uh, created, there is a open disk uh, on the target space. Now that's the mapping. Uh, <coughs> now in this, uh, in this sphere covering sphere, there is no moduli like tau for the torus. We had a moduli for torus. Now we use constraint in Sinton. It's a complicated name, but it basically what it does, it fixes the size of the tube, okay, uh, in the solution. So let's say capital Z is the target space uh, coordinate, like the wall set, uh, the target space position, okay. And R e to the power i phi is the wall set coordinate. Uh, this is the stereographic complex coordinate of the wall set, okay. Now, any arbitrary function of uh, capital Z or the small z can be Taylor expanded in uh, the alpha, alpha is the angular coordinate, uh, like this. You what you basically do is you insert an identity. Identity is what? It's a integral over d2a and then a delta function. Delta function on what is, a, a, what you do is you take capital Z one of one at r is equal to one, okay? And, and you set it to a. So that means you are eventually, so this, what this z1 is counting is the size of the disk, okay? This z1 is actually counting the size of the disk. <coughs> And what it does, it gives, so once you introduce this and you integrate over the lambda, you get solution like this. For small g less than one, you get a times z and small, small g greater than one, you get a, a bar, a by z bar. So both of them, you, you can see a and a bar are like real variables and g and z bar at g is equal to one, small g is equal to one you have a matching, like they are exactly matching up to e to the power i theta also. So this is a continuous solution, yet it is a combination of holomorphic and anti-holomorphic. It is not only holomorphic. And it's a solution of the equation of motion with this S naught. So S naught is not zero yet. So you have ad hocly created another parameter A, which you have to integrate over now. Now you integrate over the A, extremize with respect to A, and you get two solutions, two saddle points within the same modular space. And that's like zero and infinity, where when A is zero, S naught is maximized, and A is infinity when X naught is minimized. And these are the two solutions, which will again give you uh, two contribution coming from the, uh, and, uh, and when A is zero, A is related to the size of the tube. A is zero means, it is shrink to the north pole, A is infinity means it is shrink to the south pole. So that's how you can, you can immediately see. And in these limits, you can see one of the solutions gets selected. Either it is, it is becoming highly holomorphic or it is becoming highly anti-holomorphic. So it's finally, what we're saying is the solution is piecewise holomorphic or anti-holomorphic with two, with a zero size tube, with a, sorry, with a single zero size tube. And there is uh, two saddle points, one is extrema, one is minimum, one is maximum, giving contribution minus two. Minus is coming from the uh, one loop correction, which I didn't show. Uh, yes, yes. 
yes it it is true actually it is coming from the source term also this is sourcing a particular uh, like it this particular source term is helping this delar of z1 to jump from uh, being holomorphic to anti holomorphic like this is actually giving you uh, opportunity to uh, and that jump is giving you this integral yeah, that's true thanks uh, thirdly the uh, the diagram which contributes to the one like we so n to the power 4 minus 2 n square plus 1. Uh, the last one contribution is coming from torus covering sphere with two orientation reversing tube. Now two orientation reversing tube, how to think about that? You take a torus, okay, and you make a, a band out of it, just press it, and then you put it back on the sphere. And then you get this kind of structure where you have holes in the above, in the below, and at each point of the, each point you will have two wall sit at any point. Okay, so that's like a torus is covering a sphere with two holes in the north pole and the south pole. Now this is the torus code, this is the Waltzit coordinate, this is the target space, any arbitrary coordinate, theta and phi are the target space sphere angles, uh, theta and phi. Uh, I will not explain uh, why, how, how this is working, but uh, I would say that uh, this accent, you put it back in S0, it gives you a sign gordon, it's easy to so solve. It was well known previously. And uh, there are two uh, uh, conserved charges, E and L, which are related to the real, real part of tau and imaginary part of tau. Uh, this energy is related to theta minimum square. How far this string is going back? A string bit is going up and down, and this is theta minimum. So that means this is controlling the size of the tube. So this is like a, this is a, is like a tube. <coughs> and E is like theta min square. Now, here also, again, you have a parameter tau, and again, it doesn't satisfy the Virasoro constraint, uh, the solution, and uh, you calculate the tau saddle, it's a bit complicated. Uh, derivative of the imaginary tau is, uh, is energy, and real, uh, the derivative of real tau is uh, uh, angular momentum, the L, L concept charge, you can show this. Uh, now, both of them have to be zero to get the saddle point. It actually implies, which is again implicit relation, uh, we derived that this is actually imaginary of tau going to infinity. That means the period of the sine Gordon model going to infinity. But anyway, the main point is that the solution of the saddle point is like when E goes to zero. That means theta means theta mean going to zero. That means the size of the tube is becoming zero. Okay, that's where the, the solution contributes. And the solution at the saddle point has only zero size tube and Waltzit mapping is piecewise holomorphic and anti-holomorphic. Uh, you can show that also like the outside is holomorphic, outside, inside, I mean you can, so the, the other part is uh, anti-holomorphic. So one part is holomorphic, at, at each point you have two Waltzit, one is holomorphic, another is anti-holomorphic. And it also matches with the uh, Gross and Taylor result with two tubes coming from two omega points, okay. Now, uh, I, in three minutes, I'll tell about three slides. Uh, this is about the boundary, uh, with boundary. That means, uh, uh, so till now, we were talking about the partisan function and they are one by an expansion. But there are all, uh, we, we know about all the expressions for Wilson loop expectation values in those, uh, in those gauge theories also. So there should be some interpretation for that. And Gross and Taylor, uh, these were derived much before that, but uh, they ex explored the one by n expansion again. And uh, uh, this is like a disk on the manifold, like the target space has a one, one winding number one Wilson loop. The, this is winding number two Wilson loop. And these are the results, like the winding number one, winding number two with A1 and A2. And uh, this D1 means the answer for the disk, which is used in multiple times. I will not explain how this works, but the, I will only mention that there is a special point called gamma eight or the twist point, which you can think of like this. You take it, you take a disc and you hold it and you bend it back. Then in one side, in one side previously, oh sorry, previously it was completely holomorphic mapping. A single holomorphic sheet will cover this uh, disc. But here, you, if, you, if you make this holomorphic, you have to make this anti-holomorphic. That's actually, eventually that's what it will come out to be. And this is a new, uh, new moduli coming up. It's not a moduli, it's a fixed point, uh, but it's a twist point. Uh, and uh, getting a correct answer for this twist point is important. Uh, 
Now, <coughs> for this Hojawa's theory, you can check what is the boundary condition. Till now, we didn't had any boundary, so we didn't talk about the boundary condition. But this is the boundary condition, which eventually tells that the cross product between the derivative along the boundary and orthogonal to the boundary is zero. That's basically the boundary condition you get. So, and which keeps the position of the boundary fixed. That's what you want. You don't want any transformation which is changing your boundary. Uh, and, and in this case, we saw that it is very necessary to have a solution like this to be allowed. Satisfying very zero constant and equation of motion and the boundary condition. And that happens not for the gauge we used, that is the HAB is delta AB, but for the gauge where we set the auxiliary metric HAB to the induced metric. You can show it very easily that you, you use this gauge and then this, this particular solution, a uh, linear combination of holomorphic and anti-holomorphic is a solution to the equation of motion. It definitely satisfies the Virasoro constraint and it satisfies the boundary condition without any, without any complaint, okay. That's what we recently saw and with this gauge, we showed that the correct contribution of this gamma it also comes out, okay. Now, uh, now uh, I'll again briefly say a uh, uh, few words about the finite lambda. Uh, now, for, for lambda is equal to zero, we had up to this. Uh, this big uh, term, which is the Polyakov term, and then S1, okay. This was uh, contributing for the omega points and all the Euler numbers. Uh, but for finite lambda, the argument for localization is not working because it's now not a topological theory. S but still, we can take a large T limit uh, by hand. Just you take the T to infinity, uh, and then uh, you can make the theory localize on the harmonic maps. And then you can uh, calculate all the things you want to calculate, and we we uh, we we believe that it will it will uh, give you the correct answer. Now to get the exponential of the area terms, this action is enough uh, to get uh, the exponential of area with the. Uh, if you remember the expression from the beginning, I uh, it will take time to go back, but uh, it will had exponential of lambda a times n plus n bar. That contribution comes easily from this term. Okay, lambda times d2 theta, this is actually uh, counting, this is actually capturing the first, that is square root of small h, like the first induced metric. So induced metric actually calculates the area of the total manifold, that means n plus n bar. And here, we again, it's a bit complicated, but we, we showed that uh, this particular term uh, gives you all the, uh, all the branch point contributions and the area polynomial coming from the branch point. So you have to integrate over the branch point positions and this action gives you that uh, area uh, terms coming, area polynomials coming from the branch points. <clears throat> so finally, uh, uh, so what we have done is uh, we have significantly re regulated the Hojava's prescription using Polyakov uh, prescription and uh, we have corrected one of the main terms in Hojava's action to match with the result of Gross and Taylor. And uh, we have a matched couple of Wilson loop, particularly involving in the topological case, uh, that is the gamma eight contribution, uh, but uh, in the topological young mills, uh, in near future, we want to finish this finite tooth coupling case, uh, which we, uh, uh, and uh, this finite tooth coupling is, uh, uh, should be doable. And in the future goal is uh, to check the dynamical boundaries. That means uh, put a boundary condition, make the boundary condition a bit flexible so that it can uh, fluctuate and uh, it will capture uh, the fermions also, the adjoint fermions or any uh, fermions we have. And uh, so that we can get the tooth equation for the mesons. Uh, that's the bigger goal. Thanks. Lambda thing, you think you have the action and you want to just work out the details or the action is not known yet? What we, so right now the understanding is that this, we, what we checked is 
that if you know the moduli space, then you can reproduce the result. You can reproduce the Euler number or whatever polynomial you get, lambda a to the power n for finite lambda. And we showed that this particular accent term we wrote contribute uh, gives you those polynomial terms. Yes. So I would say that uh, uh, I would say that uh, we didn't check it diagram by diagram the way I showed you for the lambda is equal to zero case, but we have an uh, brief, uh, vague idea. I would say how 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 this will work out. Yeah. Uh, so even uh, in lambda equal to zero, uh, did you uh, get any terms I missed uh, which had this n n bar type of? Yes, yes. This is exactly what the example I tried. Oh, that, that then okay. Uh, so this is n n bar is one. Oh, okay. Now this, so this let's say this is one of the this is having one omega points. Omega points comes when you have the... orientation reversing tube, and in both the cases you have orientation reversing tube, okay. and that means two omega points. Like in this two omega point here you have one omega point, and this is like the case where n and n bar are one. So, uh, but uh, from the world sheet. Did you uh, so can you interpret from the world sheet action point of view or the saddle points uh, that means the omega points then uh, are associated with the number of constrained uh, instantons or, or something I mean uh, in what uh, how how are you going constrained instanton is just a trick to introduce and then one parameter to make it regulated yeah but otherwise let's forget about this which is constant instanton this is much Com, com, concrete, like where it, we didn't have to put any extra parameter by hand. Here we had a parameter. It is like torus wrapping a sphere. So right. torus had a parameter. So we used that parameter, and we saw that uh, the tubes are getting uh, becoming shrink, shrinking uh, to zero size, and and creating two points, spatial points, uh, in both the cases. Now in that limit, you can show that uh, two points moving arbitrarily is a diffeomorphism. Like it's, it doesn't cost any energy. You can move them. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, uh, okay, I can't explain, I, I can't remember the name right now. I think it's called soliton or something. I mean, in the sign Gordon model, uh, there is a, there is a particular solution which are far separated in time and then they don't talk to each other. I told you that in E goes to zero limit, in E goes to zero limit, uh, uh, T actually becomes so imaginary tau becomes infinity and T becomes infinity. Mm -hmm. So they this get separated in time. So they don't interact with each other and they become freely moving. So those are like the omega points which doesn't cost any energy and it doesn't count the area. Uh, it contributes even at the fi zero coupling uh, without any con without any trouble. So uh, so let, let me just understand. So you checked in uh, these examples, uh, but uh, you're saying that the principle is more general, and therefore you sh it should work for arbitrary n and n bar. Uh, okay. So for arbitrary n and n bar, we didn't check uh, like this. No, but, but uh, is there a systematics to it uh, that you'll get a factor like n n bar uh, or okay uh, the the a, n and n bar? No. Uh, we are believing Gross and Taylor's interpretation that uh, if you have n number of seats here, n bar number of seats here, permutation will tell you that these numbers should come. But I, I, we didn't had, we don't have an ex, even abstract argument how that will come. But except these examples where we can see a couple of examples, yeah, that that's what we tried to target that uh, we should match this. But we didn't check also that it is not matching. I mean, we believe that it will match. Yeah, that, that I should say, yeah. It's a good, yeah. This, this itself is a, the sign garden is itself is a bit complicated and uh, we didn't know how to capture uh, multiple number of omega points. It, the mapping becomes complicated very fast. Yeah, sorry. Hello. Oh, yes. Can I ask a question? Yes. I'm on Zoom. So, uh, so hi. So you'll forgive me because I'm not. I'm definitely not a string theory expert, but I just want to trace back the structure of your talk. Like you started with 
this work by Gross and Taylor, right? Yes. And uh, basically, their conjecture is that in one plus one dimensions, yes. Young Mills theory. Ah, uh, it's Euclidean, not one plus one, but it's two D Euclidean. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, two D Euclidean Young Mills maps to uh, a string theory. Yes. Right. Yes. On a on, yes. on a two D manifold. Yes, 2D target space, 2D wall sheet, everything is 2D, yes. Right. And but that their work was not complete, right? And it wasn't a complete demonstration. It was a conjecture. It is did they a show conjecture, this? I guess. I mean, I, but yeah, it was a conjecture, yes. No, I guess what I'm trying to understand is like are you like in the in what you are doing, like is it building upon that and to show complete equ equivalence between the two. So, so there are various prescriptions given in multi various times, mostly before 2000. But we are trying to explore one of the lanes they took. They gave uh, various kinds of possibilities. We took one of the lanes and we tried to concretize it uh, using like there are too many uh, divergences and uh, uh, present in Hojawa's prescription itself, and we wanted to make it regulated in some way. So I guess we are halfway there. I don't think we have completely uh, nailed it because the one of the problems I would say is calculating one loop correction around these solutions when they approach zero size. Now, once they are finite size and you can calculate one loop correction and then they give you correct answer, then you can take the limit that the shrinking. But once it is synced, then I don't know how to calculate the one loop correction. Then that those kind of troubles are there. Like, when to do the one loop correction, when to calculate the one loop correction. Do they continuously deform, like continuously, where, whether this analytical continuation is working or not. So those kind of one loop corrections are, uh, I, I tried to do these calculations, but uh, I, I don't have clear idea like uh, oh, what principle is true. But, but what we saw is you take the finite size of the disk, like these tubes, and then you calculate the one loop correction it, it gives you correct answer, then you shrink it to zero size, that gives you perfect answer. Now, whether, where, the, but that's not the classical solution we're looking for. The classical solution is when the tube is zero size. Now, zero size tube and then calculating one loop correction is completely different thing and I couldn't, I don't know exactly how to do that. So these kind of troubles are till there. So I would say, so this is one of the, uh, Can I just ask uh, a couple more uh, parts of this question, if there's time? Yes. Uh, so the maybe we can. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think. Because it's a bit late. Uh, uh, yeah, no problem. No problem. No, not an issue. Not an issue. I have Thanks. A lot of questions. Let's thank. Thank you.